There's been a lot of hubbub about difficulty modes in games, from Sekiro to Death Stranding, any time a developer mentions the difficulty mode, an angel loses its wings, and we have this massive online flame war over whether or not games should have an easy mode or not. Some people argue that these games should have an easy mode, or they just don't care, while others actively do not want an easy mode in the game. And as is usually the case with the single greatest communication advancement in human history, everyone talks past each other and no one learns anything. But I am here to change that. I am here to make the definitive video game difficulty video. I'm going to dig deep into why people may feel the way they do on both sides of the aisle on this issue while offering my own opinion on the matter as well. So, I hope you enjoy. Before I get into that though, let me acknowledge a few things. One, I am not talking about accessibility options. It's not that those aren't important, in fact, it's the opposite. They're so important that they deserve their own video. What I mean by easy mode is it's standard usage in the industry, a mode for people who aren't as good at games to still be able to play the game and have a good time. This can be in the form of multiple difficulties or letting players edit specific variables or both. As for my opinion on the matter, I think that providing these options, these easy modes, are good for everyone. I think for developers, appealing to this group is a worthwhile goal on its own no matter what type of game or experience you are making. And for gamers, I am also here to tell you that no matter how experienced you are, you benefit from an easy mode being in the game. Now, I will argue that easy mode is an inherent good, but I'm also not saying that developers who don't offer it are like bad people. We live in an imperfect industry with limited resources, and if a developer doesn't do something like this, there's a decent chance that they wanted to, but the publisher didn't give them what they needed to get the job done, be it time, money, people, whatever. However, most people arguing against easy mode aren't doing it on the grounds of it being more work for the developers. They're doing it on the grounds of just not wanting an easy mode there for creative reasons. And on that note, let's start this discussion with what I see as the closest thing to the valid arguments of no difficulty modes. Argument 1. Easy modes in games will attract casual players, and both of these things will make video games dumbed down. This is one that I see less of, but I do still see it. I consider it kind of legitimate because games are becoming easier and more accessible, and this can compromise the design of certain titles. People worried about this think that an easy mode will compromise the few truly challenging titles left on the market. But easy mode, if anything, is a reason not to compromise the experience. If a developer wants to appeal to a wide variety of gamers, but only has one difficulty mode to work with, the results will be either mildly appeasing both groups or one group taking priority. If you have an easy mode, though, you can craft your game with a core difficult experience in mind and then have easy mode just be modifying the variables of that experience letting players have more health have enemies move a little slower whatever i'm not saying it's easy to do this but it is easier to do that than it is to design one difficulty mode for every type of gamer easy mode doesn't have to mean that the core experience is designed around the easy mode in fact since most people playing on easy mode are usually not people that are concerned with a perfectly balanced experience, it's in a company's best interest to cater to the people that do care, the core players, first, and then have a secondary focus on easy mode. Alright, on to argument two. I'm worried I'm playing the game wrong. This is one I don't see voiced directly as much, but I see it voiced kind of indirectly. And when you push the game to its limit, sometimes it cracks and your enjoyment is ruined. Mario, Mega Man, Shovel Knight, these games have one fixed difficulty, so you know the experience is entirely tailored around what you're playing. Without a doubt, it's the way the game is meant to be played. People get a sense of relief from seeing a game without difficulty modes. A game that has a difficulty mode can cause a certain amount of anxiety, and that anxiety comes from not knowing which difficulty mode is right for you. At least when there's no difficulty modes, you know that the difficulty you're playing on is the one intended by the developers and the one the experience is focused on. You don't constantly worry that you're quote unquote playing the game wrong. Now playing on PC with a mouse and a keyboard, I could just barely, after about 700 deaths, just barely squeeze my way through this game on Legendary. Then I went back through on Heroic and whooped the game's ass, but this is my problem. 
which difficulty did I enjoy more? And I can kind of relate to that anxiety. I felt this a bit when I was playing Uncharted 4. With enough brute force, I could probably make my way through Uncharted 4's hardest difficulty mode crushing. But is the toughest nail shooter really what Uncharted 4 is trying to be? Is that really what it's best at? Probably not, it's probably aiming for something where you'll struggle but not die very often, as Uncharted is more of a story-driven thrill ride than anything else. So maybe not the hardest difficulty mode, but from there, there's still multiple difficulty modes to choose from. Should I drop one level to hard mode or two levels to normal mode? Will normal mode be the best for me? And what if I want to try playing a bit more casually? Maybe I use cover less and I run and gun more, leaving me out in the open to get shot at by enemies. I would probably want to lower the difficulty mode to easy mode to balance out how carelessly I'm playing, but is this the way the developers designed the game to be played? Would this be more fun, or would that make the game an unintentional joke? This may seem like a silly thing to worry about, but this decision can have huge effects on your experience. People actually make Reddit posts on this shit, and I don't really blame them. Already, we're kind of teetering on the verge of the arguments I'm going to make later in this video, but for now, let's focus on the argument at hand. The anxiety that I and maybe you feel is itself justified. However, it's putting the blame in the wrong place. The thing causing your anxiety isn't an easy mode, it's developers not clearly communicating what types of experiences their games are meant to provide. To put it another way, it is possible to both avoid this anxiety and also have difficulty modes. A game can be primarily designed for one difficulty mode, but be modified from there to fit other difficulties, and then the developers can just say at the difficulty select screen, this is the one for more experienced players. And thankfully, more and more games are already doing this. However, I'd argue that they should maybe be even more clear about this by communicating to players how difficult your game should feel. Again, Uncharted is really not best as a tough as nail shooter for the majority of the audience, and that's an important context many people don't have going in. I think that if Naughty Dog and Said said, hey, up front, Uncharted 4 is not meant to have you dying at every level at once. Maybe there'll be some struggle, but for the most part, you should be breezing through these shooting segments, but feel kinda challenged. I think if they were upfront about how their difficulty mode is supposed to feel, rather than focusing on a nebulous difficulty mode without making it clear what kind of experience they're going for, that can cause the anxiety, and providing more information on that could sort of stop that anxiety. So I get where the argument is coming from, but it's still not a good reason to not have difficulty modes. So those are the best arguments that I've seen, and they aren't great, but they aren't the main argument I see people make. See, the main one I see made is relating to things that don't even affect them, and this nebulous concept of the quote-unquote intended experience. Basically, these people think that by playing on easy mode, casual players will rob themselves of the true pleasure of the game, and rob the creators of the work they put in to create the normal mode or core mode or intended experience. In their eyes, the one experience with no difficulty mode seems more fair as everyone faces the same challenges and everyone is given the same experience. The problem with this one is is really simple. It's uh it's completely wrong. It's, it's not how anything works in our reality. A static challenge is not the same experience to every person in any situation, let alone games. How difficult the game is for someone depends just as much on their skill level as it does on the game itself. And let me demonstrate this to you in an unorthodox way, by talking about how elite of a gamer I am. Just stay with me. Now, I imagine when a lot of you non-PlayStation folks started playing Dark Souls for the first time, you were trash, and it's okay, no judgment. Dark Souls was a game that played unlike any other game released. That is, if your system of choice was the green box with worse games. I, on the other hand, am a man of immense culture, so I got the blue box with the better games. And because I picked the blue box, I got to play and beat the real first game in the series, Demon Souls. I got used to the unique pacing and playstyle and strategies of these games, long before Dark Souls was even a twinkle in the developer's eyes. So when the game was finally released, right out of the gate, I was more elite than a lot of you sweaty Halo fans, because I was, instead, a sweaty Sony pony. 
While everyone else was blown away at how difficult the game was, I was actually marveling at how casual some elements of Dark Souls 1 was compared to Demon Souls. You mean to tell me that the final boss doesn't have a move that literally steals XP away from you and can be easily parried over and over again? All seriousness, I still struggled with the game, but I had an easier time beating it than the people that started with Dark Souls 1 because I had experience with Demon Souls. And as such, my gameplay experience was significantly different than those Xbox fans. So to those who are against difficulty modes, I have to ask, between me and those that started this series with Dark Souls, which one of us got the quote unquote intended experience here? Because given how different our experiences were, it couldn't have been both of us. This is why an intended experience based on a stack challenge is just not optimal. Because even amongst avid gamers, there are multiple levels of proficiency that dramatically change the quote unquote intended experience. So if the logic doesn't make sense there, it makes even less sense when you think about the gulf between either of us and more casual players. Think about someone who hasn't even played a 3D action game before playing Dark Souls. Will they get the intended experience? No, not even close because playing on a level too difficult is a terrible environment to learn in. For a gaming example, if I played a fighting game against Sonic Fox, I wouldn't just lose, I would be destroyed as a person. But worse, I will have learned nothing from the experience because I will get so wrecked that I won't have time to figure out why I'm getting wrecked. I, I will die too fast to learn from my mistakes. I will literally not be good enough to understand how I'm not good enough. But if I play against people my rank, then hey, maybe I lose, but there's a better chance that it was a close fight, which means that I had room to experiment. I had time to see what worked and what didn't. I could play without losing so fast, I didn't have time to learn something. Now I should stress that yes, it's still technically possible to learn something in these conditions. I too had my public schooling experience in America. I am sure given an unlimited amount of time, the casual gamer would eventually beat Dark Souls, but it would not be what the developers would consider the intended experience. Why? Well, let's discuss that. When you really break it down, the intended experience of games, even difficult games, isn't really the difficulty by itself. Rather, it's a carefully balanced cocktail of difficulty and reward. From the immediacy of Call of Duty to the slow pace of civilization, all games have this balance. A level of challenge to beat and a level of reward once you beat the challenge. Even walking simulators have this balance. Think about it. You don't get the whole story whenever you want. You have to walk first. That's the whole, that's the whole thing. The game spreads its story moments, its rewards, over a certain amount of walking. The closest thing the game has to a challenge. And I'm not saying that is a bad thing, by the way. I genuinely enjoy walking simulators. The point is, all games have this balance. Challenge, reward. It's the nature of an interactive medium. This balance forms a particular pace to your game, and it is this pacing that is ultimately the intended experience of the game, not some static challenge or the difficulty itself. Pacing. Pacing is hugely important to the player experience. In fact, in a game, that may be the single greatest determiner of the player experience. Think about it. When you think about a genre, I bet one of the first things you think of is the pacing. You say things like, oh, it's a slow horror game. It's a fast paced shooter that sells gambling to children. It's an absurdly long collectathon, open world RPG hybrid, whatever that doesn't work on release and also sells gambling to children. And think about how we describe games. When you like a game, you say something like, oh, wow, I started playing it after work and now it's three in the morning, describing the time flying by or you say something like, wow, I really felt like I went on a grand adventure, which is essentially saying the game felt long, but in a good way. However, when you hate a game, what's some of the most common words you hear? Slog, oversay it's welcome. It was only this many hours long, but it felt like forever. In other words, the game felt long, but in a bad way. 
Some of the most common descriptors for game experiences is how long the game is, how long the game feels, and how you explore it. In other words, it's pacing. I'm not saying that this is all there is to games, but pacing is a huge, huge component of the gaming experience. Pacing is especially important for difficult games, as difficult games tend to strive toward a very particular balance that works for a very particular type of player. When a developer says, we designed our game to take 15 to 20 hours to beat, what they're really saying is, the pacing of our games will likely be satisfying for those who are able to beat its challenges within 15 to 20 hours, so we designed the game with these expectations in mind, and hope it fits the majority of our target audience, and if not, shit. Now, let's go back to the casual gamer playing Dark Souls. The kind of player that struggles with the first boss in Dark Souls because they don't know where the X button is. This player should not be realistically expected to play Dark Souls at its only difficulty mode. Not because the player couldn't beat it, I mean it's technically possible, but this player would not be conquering challenges at a good pace because they'll be learning how to play very, very slowly. They will conceivably spend hundreds of hours playing what was designed to be a 30 hour experience and not in a good way. Sure, they'll improve a little, but they will be conquering challenges that aren't acknowledged by the game. When a controller finally feels natural to them and when they're able to move around with the analog stick successfully, they aren't going to get an in-game achievement. Dark Souls doesn't reward players for finally learning where the X button is. It's going to reward them when they beat their first boss. And that kind of progress is not going to come at a steady enough pace to create a satisfying balance of challenge and reward for this player. So most of their experience would be a sad, unfun, boring slog. But this could be avoided with an easy mode. Easy modes to the less skilled player will likely feel like how normal or hard mode feels to you in terms of how quickly they beat challenges and feel rewarded, aka the core of the intended experience. And this not only is a better play experience, but it's also a good environment to learn in to get to the skill level of normal or hard mode if that's something the player wants to do. Arguing against difficulty modes is essentially arguing that every time you play fighting games you have to play EVO, every time you shoot hoops you have to play in the NBA, and every time you learn a foreign language you have to learn it while doing rocket science or, or whatever. Some cutoff for which difficulty is the true difficulty is arbitrary because like everything else in life, there's always someone better than you and always someone worse than you. Unless you're me, then everyone's better than you and it's all your fault. Anyways, that's why difficulty modes make sense and the intended experience argument really doesn't. But some of you may be asking, so what if someone can't play Dark Souls? Can't they just play another game? Well, there are a few things I really don't like about this argument. One, there are desirable qualities about games, even notoriously hard games that can be appealing in isolation, but not with a complete package. Dark Souls has great environments, world design, lore, and game feel. And playing Dark Souls just for that reason and not caring about difficulty is definitely a valid way to play the game. Think about how many games that you've played that you like the gameplay, but the story is garbage. It's possible to enjoy parts of games, but not others. Imagine if you had to like the story of you want to be your favorite games in order to play them. That's essentially what you're asking casual players to do, and I really don't think it's fair. But I'm gonna argue that difficulty modes are good even for hardcore gamers the sweaty, deodorantless elite that watch over Tifa's watermelons like a silent protector, a watchful guardian. Even these people need an easy mode because people aren't finishing their games. And it's becoming a tough sell for a lot of publishers. And I mean, like, the majority of people aren't finishing their games, by the way. Like, like 9 in 10 people. Jesus Christ. Now, there are probably a lot of reasons for this, but I would bet money that one of the main reasons people don't finish games is because of pacing. 
They may like the mechanics or the world or the story, but because they weren't given clearly communicated difficulty options to choose from to get the intended experience, they weren't able to tune the difficulty to get a pace that worked for them. And they weren't giving it an environment they could realistically improve in, so the game ended up feeling like a drag and they didn't finish the game. In an interview with IGN, former writer at Naughty Dog, Amy Hennig, discusses the impact this 9 out of 10 figure has on the direction of the industry. The idea that our medium just is makes it peace with the fact that like, oh, most people will never actually see the whole arc of the stories we're telling. That's bizarre to me, right? So that the age when we could make games that were, I mean, in, in, in the non-indie space, right? Make games that are six or eight hours long, don't have any other second modes, don't have a live service, don't have any multiplayer. They're just about this sort of finite crafted narrative, interactive narrative experience um, that like, you know, sticks the landing and is memorable. That's a harder and harder sell, right? To and a so, publisher, if, if yeah. not the gamer themselves, exactly. right? Well, right, and that's, I think that's, that's the big question I have is to the publishers, absolutely. Basically, like it or not, the fact that many of your fellow gamers are unable or unwilling to play through sections of a single player game is contributing to the industry-wide de-emphasis of single player games. Now, that's not the only reason, but I bet it's a big one, and I bet if we could get more gamers to actually finish single player games, then publishers would have a greater incentive to fund them. So how do we do that? Well, it's not by telling these people to get good. It's with an easy mode. Think about it. If someone makes a single player game that's super difficult and has awesome graphics and satisfying animations and the super difficult mode is the only difficulty mode, then you're limiting your audience to gamers that A, hit the sweet spot for that particular difficulty, which limits your audience, and B, have the latest tech to run all the awesome graphics, which by itself costs more money and also limits your audience. You don't have to be an economist to know that this is a tough sell for an investor compared to another Call of Duty. So in our current socioeconomic system, that means that this particular type of game slowly fades away. Or if it does get made, the core experience will be compromised to appeal to a wider audience. Meanwhile, if you had an easy mode, or better yet, you could tweak individual variables of a game, like how much XP you earn per mission, and you had clearly a communicated descriptions of the intended experience and skill level of each change, then the potential audience grows, because now, with a bit of tweaking, every kind of player would be able to have the intended experience. Which means the audience is expanded by enough people that it may be worth that investor's time. And that means that games can afford to take more risks. They can afford to have a more difficult core experience experience because they know that if it's too difficult for some people, they can just tweak the experience down a peg to give them an assist. It's no big deal. Casual players being able to play games does not have to be a threat to your experience. It's a worthwhile goal to create avenues for more casual players to enjoy the same experience more veteran players do by itself, but even on a selfish level, you only stand the gain from their support, from their dollars. Not only that, but playing this game on easy mode could be the gateway that player needs to play the game on normal mode or maybe they'll play this game on easy but the next game they'll go to normal or default or hard or whatever easy mode is not just a way to let everyone have the intended experience but to give them an opportunity to be a normal mode player and i say this as that type of gamer i got decent at games by playing them on easy mode when i was a kid and then on normal and now i usually just just jump straight to hard mode because i'm really really cool and I have lots of friends. So how do we get publishers to consider these options important enough to ensure their devs can put them in? Well, the same way any change in this industry happens, by whining very loudly to publishers. If it worked for loot boxes, it can work with difficulty modes. Just sustained whining, non-stop whining on every forum. In my eyes, it's worth it. Difficulty options should be seen like subtitles. It should be weird when they aren't in there. In a way, however, there already are ways to adjust difficulty options in a lot of games. It's just that those options are... <sighs> 
microtransactions. Think about it. You can buy an XP booster or a weapon in a pinch. You can spend over $150,000 on a terrible Transformers game. And while this is ultimately the fault of publishers and the actions our socioeconomic system incentivizes them to take, I can't help but feel like if there was as much of a push for easy modes as there was, say, no loot boxes, this wouldn't be an issue. Think about it. Selling digital items to players that actually make gameplay easier is a really scummy way to manipulate vulnerable people and it's compromising the art that we make and I think that those two alone are more than enough reason to make them make them go away. However, what it also ends up doing is essentially punishing casual players for not being as good at video games. Imagine if more of the big YouTubers or gaming outlets framed microtransactions in this way. Imagine if people who railed against selling power to players weren't just the more hardcore players who care about game balance, but the casual players who don't want to be charged a premium to get the intended experience. Once again, being inclusive to casual players, showing solidarity with those different than you only improves things for every one. In conclusion, we need to expand our view on what difficulty means if we are going to productively talk about and design game difficulty. When we think about difficulty modes, we are talking about something that means different things to different people and can be experienced in different ways depending on the person experiencing them. The intended experience should not be focused on the challenges themselves, but how you want your player to feel while playing your game. If your goal is to produce a game that makes any given player have a particular intended experience, then the best way to do this is by making sure every player can tweak your game as much much as possible to get that experience. If the intended experience of a game is to be challenging, then we need to let players tweak the part of the challenge that relates to experience. Even the naysayers owe it to themselves to encourage easier difficulties so that these games can keep being made. I guess if I had to end the video on any one idea, it'd be that when a game has an easy mode, everybody wins. So that's it. That's that's the that's the video on on difficulty. The definitive video. No one else needs to make any more videos. Bye.